Atlantis, please stand by for Senator Barbara Mikulski. Hello to all of our astronauts on Space Shuttle Atlantis. You are taking part of something quite historical. Not only have you given the Hubble a new life, uh, but you're going to give the Senate a new lease on life. You are the very first astronauts to testify from space uh, at an official hearing. I'm joined by my colleague, Senator Bill Nelson, a brother astronaut to you. I'm going to lead off the conversation by first First of all, thank you uh, for this stunning and successful uh, mission. Uh, you have, uh, as you close the hatch on the Hubble, you have now opened a new door to a new era of scientific discovery. Hubble is the people's telescope and it wanted to have another chance to be able to educate generations, a new, a new generation of scientists and school children. What you've done to refocus and recharge the Hubble Space Telescope is appreciated. We appreciate the daring and the difficult and the dangerous things uh, that you've done to install the cameras, the computers, the batteries, and the gyroscopes. Hubble is the greatest scientific instrument since Galileo, but you're some of the greatest astronauts uh, that we could get hooked up with. We want to hear from you about what those experiences are like, but before I do, uh, Bill, Senator Nelson, did you want to say something to your uh, brother astronauts in space? Hey, guys, I wish I were up there with you. Scene, are you the one that's going to lead it off? So, okay, well, that looks, we, we, see, we see you very clearly. I feel like uh, if only the Hubble is going to work as good as this link. So tell us, what was, uh, what was it like to be up there? What, is, what was the greatest nail-biting thing that you had? Uh, what was the... Uh, So let's hear from you. Well, Senator, uh, let me let, let me leave. Senator, uh, I just say first of all, we're very honored to be able to uh, appear before the com committee today. It's an honor for us. It's also an honor uh, to be part of this mission. Many people worked very hard on it, uh, including all the folks at Goddard. And of course, uh, your efforts, Senator, keeping Hubble alive are much appreciated. We're a beneficiary of that uh, vision that you share with all Hubble as a part of the spirit of exploration that I think is an American dream we all share. So thank you so much. Well, tell us what was the um, most for all of you to jump in, what were some of the most thrilling moments of the mission? What were the most nail, some of the most nail biting? We sure liked that uh, disposable bag comment uh, because we knew you had uh, been able to fix that whole computer uh, uh, situation. Yes, uh, Senator, I'll let a couple other astronauts talk, but I'll tell you right from the start when we went out on the first EVA, our very first prime objective was to install the new camera, the wide field camera. And in order to do that, you have to take out the old one. And when we came to the one bolt that controls whether that comes out or not, we were right on the edge of breaking it. And when I got the call in the cabin that it had broken free, the first thing that went through my mind was that that was broken. And on day one, we had already uh, not achieved our primary objective. But uh, fortunately, it turned out the torque was loosened and uh, everything worked out well from then. But it wasn't the last nail-biting moment we had. And I'll let a couple other folks talk about their experience. Mass? Yeah. Senator Mikulski, it's uh, really an honor. Uh, for This is Mike Massimino. And uh, it's really an honor for us to be able to talk to you and your colleagues. Thank you so much for thinking of us and taking time out of your day to speak with us. It's really quite an honor. We'll never forget. Uh, for me, to answer your question, I was uh, Mike Good and I were out uh, for spacewalks number two and four. 
And for me, I'd have to say the the moment. I think this is the one of the moments that'll stand out for my life when I, you know when I'm sitting in my rocking chair years from now, or maybe not that many years from now. But whenever <laughs> whenever I'm sitting in a rocking chair thinking, uh, I'll probably be thinking of the moment on on uh, the fourth spacewalk when Mike and I were outside and the rest of the gang inside and everyone on the ground trying to help us. Uh, when I wasn't able to get the the bolt to turn for the handle to take the handle off to con to continue with the repair of the STIS instrument, the uh, space telescope uh, imaging spectrograph, and we had practiced this so many times as a crew to do this repair and never expected. We tried to think of every problem we could come up with, and we were prepared, I thought, for everything, but we never expected that particular bolt to give us trouble. And uh, when it did, and when we started getting the suggestions from the ground. Uh, I really thought that we were in trouble. I, I couldn't see how we were going to be able to continue the repair at that point. But the folks at the Goddard Space Flight Center did a great job, uh, along with the folks at the Johnson Space Center and people from around the country, I'm sure, were all involved trying to figure out how we could do this. And we didn't have much time because we were running late uh, into the spacewalk. But they figured out a, a, a way for us to fix it. We got the tools we needed, and then we were able to, uh, to get access to the board by breaking off the handle in a way that we would never have imagined to do it uh, when we when we uh, launched. We would never thought we'd have to do that, but we did it. And for me, that was such a relief that we could continue with the repair and, and everything else from then kind of went uh, kind of went as planned. But that that moment, that feeling, those those minutes in between the time where we had the problem until we fixed it were really uh, really something for me because I, I was out there in my spacesuit looking at the earth and, and wondering, gee, are we going to be able to do this? And, and through all the teamwork and all the ingenuity of the whole NASA team, we were able to pull it off. So for me, that was the big moment. Bueno, you want to talk about our issues? And Senator Mikulski from uh, Colonel Mike Good, uh, also want to thank you for the opportunity to uh, testify before your committee uh, today. It's a real honor and a, and a privilege. Uh, for me, as a first-time space flyer and a first-time spacewalker, going out with Mike Massimino was really a privilege. And uh, as Mike said, we trained and trained and trained for this mission. Um, but nothing could have prepared me for going out uh, the hatch that first time. It was truly an amazing experience. Uh, we were on our way on that uh, on my first EVA, EVA number two, and we went out to uh, to replace the rate sensor units, which help point the telescope accurately, which, as you know, is so important. Uh, for the astronomy and the pictures that they're, you know, trying to accomplish with this uh, telescope. And we got through the first one okay. We had three to do. And the second one just, uh, you know, just wouldn't go on right. And uh, we worked through it for a long time and ended up having to go to a, a spare unit. Finally got it on, got the third one done after a little bit more work. And uh, then I thought, wow, that's great. Got those done. And then I had to close the doors. And uh, those also gave us a little trouble. Really had to push on those hard. I started pushing against the arm, and uh, I thought I was going to push the whole orbiter back in, uh, I don't know, back into the next century. But um, it all worked out. Real nail biters out there to, to, uh, to be sure. And Senator Mikulski, this is uh, Greg Johnson, the pilot. It, too, is an honor to uh, testify before your subcommittee. Uh, I can tell you from the flight deck, Scooter and I and Megan were watching, and every single EVA, to me, was a nail-biter. I was trying to uh, photo-document them, uh, some of it with IMAX, and uh, the two points that really uh, come to mind are uh, Bueno closing the door when the arm started to slip as he pushed as hard as he could, and then Mike Massimino uh, going to get contingency tools in areas that he hadn't really uh, gone to before and then uh, breaking that bolt. Uh, you should have seen the action out the back window. It was, uh, I'm sure it was better up close, but uh, from the pilot's perspective, uh, I was uh, on the edge of my seat, the uh, all five EA EVAs actually. And I guess I'll let uh, Megan comment. Dr. MacArthur, uh, and then, did you uh, want to say anything? Any more questions for? Me. 
Yes, ma'am. Hello, Senator Mikulski and Senator Nelson and all of the senators on the committee. Uh, it's great to be chatting with you today about our experiences. Uh, I think you've heard a lot about how the EVAs were pretty much all nail biters, and, and that's certainly true. Those guys did great work out there, though, and uh, we're real proud of them. Uh, operating the arm, that was my uh, primary task during the flight, and it actually went all uh, very nominally, very much as we expected and as we had trained, which is it's pretty incredible to me to be thinking about this amazing stuff that we're doing, moving this giant telescope around in space with the robotic arm and, and have it be nominal. So I just take away that sense of wonder at doing the incredible and having it be nominal. That's uh, sort of the big impression that it has made on me. Well, that first of all, thank you. It's really exciting to hear you. And we really, again, want to su salute your, your daring and your bravery and your courage. And this takes me to a question about all of your work uh, personally. You know, you've been training for this now for several years. You've had the support of devoted families, and we've had delayed takeoffs, setbacks, challenges in space. My question to you is when you, you've literally put your lives on the line uh, for this scientific endeavor, could you tell me why you wanted to service the Hubble and why knowing at times the uncertainty of the risk involved here, uh, that you were willing to risk your lives uh, to fit an aging telescope who seemed like its best, day, best days were behind it? Senator, it's, it's really wonderful to appear before your committee and all the senators there today. I really appreciate you taking the time to, to hear us. Uh, you know, Hubble really has struck a, a fundamental chord in human his, the human hearts around the world. Uh, it would be hard to find a K-12 through school room anywhere in the United States of America that doesn't have a Hubble picture up on the wall. Uh, from a science perspective, as you opened the hearing, it's, it's probably the most significant uh, scientific instrument of all time in terms of its productivity. And it tries to answer, astronomers try and answer using Hubble fundamental questions that we've had, you know, since the beginning of human history. You know, where do we come from? You know, where are we going? What's the history of the universe? What is the stuff that we're made of? You know, how was it made? What's the universe made of? All these very, you know, deep philosophical questions that everybody has a curiosity about. You know, that's what Hubble and all the other science basic science that we do in this great country is all about, and Hubble is at, at the pointy end of that. And so from a, a perspective of risk, we all take risks every day. You know, driving up uh, 295, you know, to Baltimore, there's a certain risk there every morning in the commute. Uh, and we don't think about those risks. We think about the risks when, you know, the stakes are a little bit higher as they are for our space program. But when you look at the importance of what we do, things like Hubble, uh, the International Space Station, our exploration program, our climate observing, our observing the Earth, the dynamic Earth, all of these things are so very important to our country and to the world uh, that the risks are definitely worth it. And, and I would just add uh, quickly that uh, we're not leaving an aging telescope. We're leaving a newly refurbished telescope with new instruments, instruments that have been repaired, a, a telescope that is now at the apex of its capabilities uh, and will be for a long time to come. Bill, did you have a question? Hey guys, I, I just want you to know that you have made the spring in the step of every American a little bit bouncier by what you all have accomplished. And uh, what you said about uh, us understanding this universe that we are part of and where did we come from is now going to be better understood by the success of your mission. So congratulations to all of the team. I, too, want to conclude uh, this uh, conversation by, again, thanking you for your dedication, uh, your uh, sense of duty, and uh, 
you really, when we talk about the Hubble and giving it essentially new, a new life and a new way of going and seeing the universe, uh, you've touched our hearts uh, and you've also uh, made history. Uh, we want to wish you a very safe uh, landing, and uh, we look forward, uh, Senator Nelson and I, to welcoming you uh, at the Capitol, where we can give you a great big Hubble hug uh, and welcome you back home. Uh, this concludes our part of the conversation. Thank you very much. We've enjoyed it. <laughs> Atlantis, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thanks. Thank you, Senator Mikulski. Outstanding. Thank you very much, Houston Thank ACR. You're making it proud. Thank you, Senator Mikulski. Atlantis, we are now resuming operational audio communications.